We're officially back, and we got Titans Rossi joining the show. Let's go. Tighten up. Let's get into it. Titans talk. Good, bad. We're going to decide. We'll see. Tighten up. So welcome to Tighten Upload. Really appreciate you tighten up that like button. We'd uh, appreciate it here on the show. Again, we have Titans Rossi joining us here in a little bit uh, to break down the Titans talk. Plus, Rossi's had a lot going on over on his point, uh, his channel. Um, like I said, broke some major news. We have one of the guys in the house that actually broke the breaking news on Rossi's channel. We'll get into that in a second. We got a lot to talk about tonight. We got, again, the Titans. Looks total of disarray. Looks like this thing's about ready to, I don't know. I mean, that game against Jacksonville, I know the sack, you know, and, and daily and that crap, but my goodness, did that game turn, and it was it was pretty much a nightmare uh, how it ended. Now Jaguar fans think they're in it. They think the AFC South has a possibility. Uh, UCF Jaguars posting a lot of stuff on record. So, again, uh, Colts fans are excited now because they feel they're back in it. All the Titans got to do is basically win two games. Jacksonville, Houston, done. Division's ours. Get some help, uh, whatever you want to call it. Maybe go out and beat the Chargers this week. Chargers don't have an awesome uh, pass or rush defense. Always a possibility. But the last time we uh, were here, we had a general manager. So we got to break that down a little bit too because I got a lot to say on that. And I don't think uh, – I think a lot of us feel the general manager thing was a good thing, and we're all excited. We're like, yeah, the tight. But in reality, I think there's some takes we should have looked at Plus, the A.J. Brown stuff comes up. Uh, again, I get furious because you guys know me. I'm always on here barking up a storm about how we're going to miss A.J. Brown. And how many comments do I get? How many people on Twitter and everywhere else to say, hey, you know, upload. He was never going to sign for that or upload it. We got Traylon Burks, and it, it was a good deal. Okay. Well, now that John Robinson's gone, it's not a good deal anymore. It's terrible. It's the reason why he's fired, and we're all excited about that. We all agree with it, so we'll dive into a lot of that. But before we go any further, let's bring the man of the hour in, Titans Rossi. Titans Rossi, you can go follow him at Titans Rossi on Twitter, which is blowing up, by the way. He's almost at 4,000, and then you can follow him on YouTube, which would definitely help him out. Um, he's got amazing content. I think his video, if I'm not mistaken, is about 7,000 uh, that you just hit. So, Titans Rossi, thanks, man, for joining the show, buddy. Yeah, it's it's great to be on, man. It's been a it's been a crazy week uh, on my channel, and you know, honestly, for the network as a whole, for our team, um, we've had a lot going on. And thank you to uh, our resident insider, James, uh, aka Titans for Life. Um, but it's just been a kind of a depressing last few weeks right you know with the titans it's just been kind of drab i mean honestly the the season as a whole is kind of been drab you know i mean it's it's we haven't really played well i mean really the whole season i mean we've not on offense at least for a while we were we were gangbusters on defense we were out there just laying it to people putting the fear in people and teams. And now it's just the injuries are mounting up. We can't overcome them. And it's just, I think we're kind of seeing now the effects of not having playmakers like AJ Brown and not having playmakers like Denitro, Denico Autry in the game, Jeffrey Simmons being hurt. It's just starting to all pile up. Let me ask you this. Okay. Personal question. I don't care what you say on Twitter. I don't care what you say on your own channel. I actually do, but I want, I want to know your honest take right now. <laughs> John Robinson gets fired. What's your initial thoughts? I was shocked. I mean, I was I was really shocked. I mean, I, I never thought he was even... A lot of people talked about how they wanted John Robinson gone and all the mistakes, but, you know what the last six seven years he's been here we've been winning and it was that's when it happened 
I had Corey Curtis on the show. Um, and it was like, I think the week that it happened or right after it happened, just the timing of it. And I just, I just felt like from the beginning, there was more to the story. And I told Corey on the show, I said, I know there's more to the story and I'm going to find out what it is. <laughs> I said, I'm going to find out what it is because you got a guy who comes in, turns the, I mean, you know, with help with Vrabel, turns the entire organization around. I mean, as far as winning football again, and all of a sudden he's just fired mid season doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I mean, I was I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. And that's why I said there's got to be more to this story than we're not being told. And yep. thank you, James, for finding that out. <laughs> they're, 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 again, John Robinson perfect? No. Did he miss on some picks? Yes. He's ultimately the one that's going to take it. I get it. Um, but here's my problem, okay? A lot of people are putting Amy on a pedestal. And I like Amy, okay? I think she's one of our best owners we've had. I love how she puts team first. I love how she does all that stuff, right? It seems like she really does put on a face. She just bought a plot of land in Tennessee. So, she, I mean, she uh, came through with that area. I know people were giving her a hard time for living in Houston or around the Texas area. But and she, the uniform unveil was cool. The draft, get all that. Perfect. Here's some things I don't understand. We are just ready to just kind of assume that this is a great move. I mean, you mentioned it. How many winning seasons with J-Rob at the helm? It was a lot. I know this fan base sees repetitive stories and think they're going to work out. For example, Coach Malarkey first basically to get us a team win in the playoffs other than what, 2004 or something like that was our last playoff win. Not only did he get the playoffs first time since 2008, but he actually got us a win. And before that game started against the Chiefs, they wanted him fired. After the before the I mean after the Patriots game, they ended up firing him. So we were okay with it, right? Because Vrabel was supposed to be the guy to take us to the next step. So here's ultimately my prop for all the people that assume Amy's just making the right decision, and we got a lot of trust and faith in Amy in February. Okay, not even a year ago, she extended him for four more years. So when she gets on the media and all that kind of stuff and starts to basically say, hey, look, if I know you're fired, I'm going to fire you right now. Question is, Rossi, what, I mean, besides the AJ thing, which we were told never was a factor, that's a big mistake. You know, you know yeah. what covers that up? Money. So... I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't feel any more confident about it because mm -hmm. she made an awful decision extending him when she was going to fire him seven or eight months later. I guess that's the issue. I'm yeah. Having. And it, it's weird that it, it's all very strange. It's it's all very strange to me even now, um, considering the extension. um you know, I mean, was it because of the season they had last year with all the injuries? And then, you know, J-Rob, of course, was a big part of those players that they brought in that came in and, and you know, outperformed and, and kept the and got the team 12 wins, you know. So was she giving J-Rob credit for that? I, I just think that there's there's things that have happened. I, I think the AJ thing had a big, big part of it. And. They're just, I think there's even way more than we're even, than we even know. I think there's even, there's got to be even more things that it happened for her to just say, okay, let's give this guy the ax after yeah. seven winning seasons, you know, well, even more than the AJ thing. Yeah. And if you're a player, what does it say about you? You know, they fire the GM who puts you on this team who puts mm -hmm. you in a position or may have extended you or may have given you a payday, Kevin Byard. And then you go yeah. out on Sunday and Amy says, listen, I knew this guy wasn't going to be around. So I went ahead and made the move right now. What mm -hmm. are you telling the team? 
you're telling the team that whatever he put together or constructed isn't good enough for her, right? So this season, I mean, that game was brutal, Rossi. We've we've seen moments. Yeah. The Eagles game was terrible. The Bills game wasn't very much better. But I just feel like that's an ultimate downer for the team. And I, if I'm a player, which I know Byard's already come out and said, and you're like, hey, you know, like the new GM coming in is going to reevaluate all of us. We don't we don't know. That is yeah. not what was supposed to be this year. This was supposed to be a Super Bowl running team, and all I see are disasters. And one disaster we continue to ignore. Media does it. Oh, the media the media really does it. I don't know why they do this, but they just mm-hmm. keep ignoring the fact that Todd Downing is not a very good offensive coordinator. And I'm not blaming him the whole season on him. I know players got to play and all that kind of coaches got to coach. I ain't seen any coaches coach on offense. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I put a thing. Describe today's game. And, um, you know, my word was distracted. And I even made a post about they look distracted to me. And I was actually messaging Corey Curtis throughout the game. And, and he even said it, too. He said, I think they're distracted. Now, a lot of people made that post. They're like, Players play the game, you know, blah, 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 blah. I get that, you know, but at the same time, like what you're talking about now with Kevin Byard, you know, uh, John Robinson took a shot on him. John Robinson had a hand in a lot of these guys. Another thing about John Robinson was he was a very hands-on GM. Yep. There were many practices in training camp where you see J-Rob out there with a dip in his mouth and he's doing drills with the guys, just like Vrabel is. You know, and and he was very close to a lot of these guys. So, in my opinion, I mean, you can't tell me that it didn't affect them mentally on some level. Now, did it affect them enough to go out there and just lay a complete egg and let Evan Ingram, who was going to retire this season, you know, all become Travis Kelsey? I I think that was because David Long wasn't in the game, obviously. But true. I mean, I think that of course it has an effect. Of course. You're you're firing your GM. It's not like this guy's just some kind of regular GM who sits up in the office all day. He was very hands-on. So in my opinion, and now, you know, no people don't have to agree with me, of course, but I just think that um they looked like a distracted, not ready to go team on Sunday, mistakes, penalties, fumbles. First quarter, you know, the offense was doing well, but of course the turnovers. Yeah. You know, so, and, and again, I, I've been on for the watch party. Shout out to TA. I mean, continues to bring it with the watch party. So shout out to him. Um, and I know he was live last night. So definitely go back and check him out. Check Rossi out. Check, uh, you know, our guys out here on our network as well. Power Hour. Like I said, Ryan Harris, we already men- mentioned James, um, you know, so, so again, Brian's breaking down the draft, so we'll get to him later. Um, but long story short, this game, I'm not going to blame it on Tannehill. Uh, yeah. The offensive line's a train wreck. Uh, there was a stat that came out today that I was reading on Twitter where the Titans have the 32nd ranked offensive line. I mean, we can't throw the ball. We can't run the ball. We're 16th and rushing now with Derrick Henry. He even has a decent game where he's what over a hundred, almost how many yards did he have in the first quarter? And then they went back it and was, they showed like the second or third quarter. I think like it was the yards. most he's ever had in the yeah. first quarter. So yeah, let's like just that. go away from him, you know, or he fumbles the ball. So let's just forget about him or put him in wildcat late in the game down. How mm-hmm. many scores where he missed bobbles the ball. I mean, that ends up going back to me to the offensive coordinator, because as Vrabel's mentioned, as Amy's mentioned, you know what? People got to do their jobs, and they're expected to do them. I don't understand why this guy – well, I know why, because Vrabel's going to protect him to the end, but that's part of the issue. You know, maybe John Robinson behind the scenes, which we don't know this, put a little pressure on him to can Todd Downing. Would we all change our tune a little bit on the John Robinson fire? Probably not, but I don't know, man. I don't want to spend all day on J-Rob, uh, but at yeah, the yeah. last – I just – if you guys want to post a comment, I'm going to get to some of the comments here break this up a little bit and then I want to play your video. Thank you so much for, for showing that. And, and James as well, 
I want to play that video of the news that you dropped that A to Z Sports refuses, just downright <laughs> refuses to mention the name. You know what I mean? All we right. need to send them copies of uh, Fort Minor. Remember the name because I think that right. is very important as you uh, are just tearing it up, Ross. So I want to give you definitely some shout out. Uh, let's go to some of the comments. But again, my closing comment, you didn't need to fire him right now. I thought that was the dumbest thing ever. Um it didn't do anything. It didn't net you any brownie points. You got people in right. power now that probably won't be in power when it comes to the end of the season. And if this is the Vrabel thing, where Vrabel turned around and stabbed John Robinson in the back, no offense, Rossi. I love Vrabel, but I don't want to be a part of that. I, d I don't want that to be our franchise where people are scared to come to because they never know when they're going to get stabbed in the back. Malarkey kind of got stabbed in the back. We saw John Robinson possibly get stabbed in the back. And I just, you know, years prior, you know, I, I think we took players over coaches, GMs, or coaches over GMs. And I just, you know, I know a lot of them are a mess. But anyways, let's let's keep going. So uh, let's get to some of your comments. Uh, Brewer is embarrassing. Uh, Daily Brewer, they got to go next year. Would you agree with that? 100%. You know, and, and Ben Jones, honestly, is probably not coming back next year. He'll probably retire. So he's gone. So our offensive linemen overpay Lawan, which I don't think they're going to. And I think Lawan knows it too. Um, you would have vacancies at left guard, uh, center, right guard, Nate Davis. He's fine. And then right tackle, uh, Petit Ferreira. I think he's okay. I think that he's definitely someone they can work with. But Radens. Mm -hmm. That's probably over. I I just don't know what they're going to do, Rossi. I mean, that's the title of the show. Uh, is this starting to be the end? And if you look at what they're going to do at quarterback, there's no guarantees they're going to bring Ryan Tannehill back, especially for that money, and, and especially when they can basically let him go for nothing and not be destroyed against the cap. Derek, some of you think Derek's on his last leg right now. You know what I'm saying? So he's gone. You have Traylon Burks and Aconquo. That's all you got. Sad. Yeah. It's really sad. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a total. They could be, I mean, we could be in the midst of a rebuild here. You know, I mean, if they want to go that route, I mean, they, we we could be, we could be there this offseason. I mean, it just, just depends on what they want to do. Yeah. Well, we know this year is kind of like they're going to I, I kind of said this a couple of weeks ago and I hope some people got mad at me, but I like to speak my mind. <laughs> um, and I respect you all in the chat that speak your mind as well. But we're going to be the four seed. So the only question is who's going to be the five and the way that Miami's yeah. lost. Uh, it's basically going to come down to the our favorite division we want to see in the playoffs. And they always the one that destroys us as the number one seed. It's going to be the AFC North. So the only question is, is it going to be Baltimore or is it going to be Cincinnati? I mean, that that's that's where I think this is headed. So we'll be the four. Can we right. beat both those teams? Yes. But after that, if we don't win, I mean, we don't have a GM at this point. But, yeah, I think the offensive side of the ball is definitely going to get a rebuild. They're going to have to. Defensive side of the ball, you can't just have a great defense and your offense be pathetic. So do you move some of those parts on defense to try pick up speed down the line? And the only person that really knows that I think right now is, is Vrabel. All right. All right. Let's get some more comments. Clay, what's going on? Uh, JS 75 said Todd Downing ran away from the run game, which is, I, I don't understand why he does that. Uh, there are some dumb moments that he does, but I, ultimately, I mean, who on this wide receiver course scares you? I mean, Rossi, we, we kind of talk behind the scenes and stuff, and everybody knows me and you are huge Kinsey fans. Uh, as he continues to just, I'm going to go ahead and say it, rot on the practice squad. Uh, I don't know what their plan is for him. I know fans, I, I know there's there's a fraction of fans that like to mock him consistently, even when, you know, mm -hmm. he had a family member pass away. They're still mocking him. I don't know why that matters to them. I don't know why they care so much about him being on the practice squad. The bottom line is, here we go again. We have no punt returner. 
Robert Woods does not want to be the punt returner. I think that's clear as day based on his play. Mm -hmm. Who else is left to return punts at this point? The guy that, that, that board guy that I thought actually did somewhat decent. Do you know why they got rid of him all of a sudden? Just they're like, nah, we're good. Bring somebody else in. I think he got hurt. Oh, did he get hurt? Hey, he was hurt. It. Yeah. Yeah. So then we bring back our favorite receiver who can't catch the ball. So I'm assuming they're going to get rid of him again. I, I just, I have no idea what we're doing. Like Nick Westbrook, Akine, I mean, he's a good dude, but he's probably like a three at the best. Robert Woods is probably, we thought he'd be a one. He's, I don't even know if he's a two this year, how he's played. I think if, right. I've, I've seen this online. Like our best option at this point is probably a Conquo. But Todd Downey, like for the most part, will just not continually stick with him in the offense. So, so frustrating. <laughs> Ryan says, you know, A to Z low key. Don't like us. They, I think, I will say that I think uh, you getting to know Austin a little bit probably changes the tune a little bit because I don't think Austin's like a bad guy, but I think there's something in there where they just will not. And, and there's a lot of people that are shooting them stuff left and right, but they just, they're not going to budge on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they, they're just not going to mention the name, even though they, I don't even care. Like I don't have any beef with them anymore. Uh, once they stopped mocking yeah. Mason, I didn't really care. Um, but like I said, that you had great information. What that information is, I think this is a great segue to actually play what you're talking about. So if you have not seen this, you can see the full broadcast over on Rossi's channel. Uh, how many views is it, that? Is it over seven by now? Yeah, I think it's right at seven. Um, you know, it's all the other stuff too. Seven on YouTube, we had um on the on the tweet over 190,000 impressions wow um like 244 retweets two uh 120 quote retweets Nate Washington retweeted it there was a subreddit that came up with like 300 comments and somebody had took a screenshot i mean um it's made it on both a to z shows with out us getting any credit <laughs> and um apparently it was on an xm radio show too um and i also heard that somebody mentioned it during a 104.5 the zone call-in show so nice. um nice. it's yeah it's garnered some attention it's definitely raised some eyebrows and people know about it Corey curtis knew about it um people in the media have have heard this and i've even heard um that the Titans organization has even heard about it. So, yeah. yep. There you a go. Lot of time, There's a segue. Uh, and, and a <laughs> lot of times they, they sit on information that they can't dish out, but we aren't credentialed. So remember that when people want to mock us yeah. and drag us in the mud and stuff like that, we're not credentialed. We don't necessarily have to follow media rules that are credentialed. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Exactly. Uh, before we do super chat time. Thanks so much, William. We appreciate it, man. Uh, he's selling tickets to the game. So if you want to talk to him and people that are out in California, uh, I believe Titan Anderson's going to the game as well. Uh, he went last year. He had a blast, him and Billy. So shout out to those guys. Players are starting to see through Vrabel's pride, and they are not buying into it anymore. That's an interesting take. Thanks for the super chat. I mean, I just think they're really – the, the injuries are just – yeah, they're too much to overcome. The question I have, though, is why is it just us all the time? Every single time we go up against another team, we have double, triple the size injuries. And this happened last year. And people still make excuses for it. Something's not working right. Either it is all John Robinson's fault. And he brings in damaged players or something's going on behind the scenes where their training staff's not doing what they're supposed to. They're not following uh, discipline stuff outside of the practice facility. Like in the off season, they're not staying true to their, themselves and what the team expects them to do, but that needs to get addressed because I mean, you should not be penalizing John Robinson for bringing in all these undrafted free agents that aren't technically terrible. Look at Stonehouse. Like if you're going to complain about Robinson, then you would have to say that the Stonehouse thing was a joke or whatever. And maybe it lightning in a bottle. But again, He's put in that position too because all these injuries. 
like the depth is really, really challenged. So let's get to that video and then we'll, we'll talk about it. And plus you're here. So hopefully James is still with us somewhere. We'll, 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 uh, we'll find out what's going on. So this was on Rossi's channel just a few nights ago. I've confirmed um, through several different sources that the ownership and uh, uh, Shannon, um, they had worked out the cap uh, to where they could offer AJ uh, somewhere between $22 million a year plus uh, six to seven million in incentives. That's where you get the the twenty nine million, right? And okay. then there was the there was another offer that was like twenty five million in a year, but only with two million in incentives, which would that bring you yeah, that would bring him to, wow. to where he could make up to twenty seven million. That was what was authorized, but J Rob never offered it. What do you mean? He never offered. So when he told you that your the the shot of you and your rebuttal got cut off, maybe that would be the plug to get them over to your channel to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and watch the video. <laughs> but going into that situation, um, how did that change your initial take? What I asked you, I don't know, like fifteen minutes ago. Um, it, it, it blew my mind to be honest. I mean, if you keep watching, I'm like, what? That's insane. You know I mean? It's just like, to me, um, the question lies within, you know, cause we don't, we still don't know every detail. We know what the owners gave him the authority to give, to offer, AJ, you know, now the, the thing, what we're saying is he offered him 16 million. That was it. No other offers. So if that's the case, in a way you would think that's almost, I mean, a fireable offense right on the spot. I mean, you're talking about a potential franchise player here, you know what I mean? And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think that Look, I don't agree with with J. Rob being fired during the middle of the season. I'm with you there. I don't agree with it. I think it's bad timing. What's it matter? You know what I mean? What I mean, I could understand early in the season, maybe, but this late in the season, I think you just let them ride it out. You know, I mean, I they're saying that it's because they're going to start doing the scouting soon and. They would rather have, but they're not going to hire a GM probably till the end of the season anyways. So, you know, what, what's the difference? I, I just think it was a bad look. Um, do I disagree with it? If, if J Rob is doing stuff like that and, and not giving Amy um, and the ownership um, certain information that she should be getting, and it's happened multiple times. I don't know if it's happened multiple times, but you had the thing with Simmons. If you watch the video too, guys, if you go watch it, you are in the chat, you'll see us. We talk about Simmons too. It's, it's an hour and 45 minute show. Yep. The first hour is about Simmons, about AJ um, too. So those two things combined alone, I feel like probably the straw that broke the camel's back and, I don't disagree with her firing J Rob. I just disagree with her doing it right now. Yeah. And I, I got to feel like there's got it. Maybe they did the talking, you know, you bring everybody in a room and you communicate what's going on, but if their ultimate plan is it was weird. You don't really hear a lot of people talk about this. Uh, we talked about it in the game, um, you know, leading up to the firing, but when you go back with the Philly game, uh, there was a lot of swirling around Ohio State seeking to go all in on Vrabel because at that time they weren't in the playoff. They've lost to Michigan twice now in a row. A lot of people aren't happy with the day guy or whatever his name is. Could this have been a reaction? Hey, Ohio State's going to throw a ton of money at him, so let's give him the keys to the castle and let's uh. keep him here. Like, we'll never know that. 
we'll never know if Ohio State was really going to move on from their coach anyways, even though they're now in the playoff. Like I've mentioned now, I mean, some things happened. Um, man, Tennessee, if they would only beat South Carolina, they would be in the playoff. But I just, I just think the timing was bad. And I think it's okay to say that. It's bad timing. You're, you're in a playoff push. This team's not crap. You know, a few weeks ago, here's the thing yeah. that really ticks me off. A few weeks ago, the Titans were 7-3. and three. They should have beat Kansas City with Malik Willis. Uh, they totally threw that game away late. We know the refs had something to do with it. But, I mean, just a few weeks ago to where we are now, it's like, okay, yeah, instantly. She said instantly she knew, and she wasn't going to de delay it because she made up her mind weeks ago. Rossi, weeks ago we were seven and three. Seven and three. Right. So I just I don't I don't really understand it. I still don't. Going to the AJ thing, okay? This is a total joke, by the way. I didn't really call John Robinson. But if you are in the John Robinson camp from this, which shout out to him for it's tough to get this this news, you know, and this team is competing. They were seven and five when he was released of his duties, but that's his team. But if you go back, I mean, Robinson's camp's going to tell you they didn't trust AJ's knees. Every game last year, even versus us this year, he's down on his knees again. You know what I'm saying? And he looks like he's hurt, and he bounces right back up, and he'll play the game. He just wasn't going to fork over all that money, and there are a lot of you that agreed. I was in the minority when I came in on that night when the trade happened. And I was going off. You can see that video. It's still there. How I thought that was the dumbest trade in the world. And uh, I'm not going to change my mind because the Titans went and fired somebody. You know what I'm seeing? Or they hired someone or did this. I, I can't stand when people do that. I think you should have your own mind on what you think and what you expect and not just agree with everything the Titans do because you end up backtracking and you end up changing your mind. So, again, I, I don't want to spend, like, the whole time on the show – but with the A.J. Brown thing, they made a mistake. I, I, Traylon Burks, I like. <laughs> Traylon Burks isn't out there again. I know the the, the 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 hit was a cheap shot, Rossi, but at the end of the day, man, he's still not out there, and A.J. is. And, and I think there would have been a difference with this offense. Would it have been enough to overcome the, the Bengals and what we did went through last year? Probably not because the defense is so banged up. But my goodness. Yeah totally different a few weeks ago and nobody mentions that right and i think um i think you know with aj if he was healthy with us this year like he is with the eagles i think you're talking i mean we're probably talking at least two more wins i would say i mean um you know there's a few games there where they were a couple plays away but they couldn't I mean, look at the Kansas City game. You know, if you if you have AJ and and Ryan Tannehill in that game, I mean, you're more than likely winning that ball game. You know, he, he, maybe even the Bengals game. You got a guy like AJ in there. Although Burks was making some plays, but you know, I mean, I I was totally against the AJ trade from the beginning, and I just feel like I I get where they're they're coming from as far as okay, we got to have money for Simmons. We've paid Ryan Tannehill this gigantic contract. Um, we're going to have to figure out Derrick Henry at some point again. Um, you know, but I think there's ways to make it work. Teams do it all the time. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It's over now. Um, I still have hope for the final four games. You know, I mean, I it's probably a fool's hope, you know, but... I feel like if there's one coach that can that can somehow muster up um, some wins for this team and, and get them kind of get their confidence back up, I feel like Mike Vrabel can do that. Um, the yeah. question is, it's the injuries, man. It's just the injuries are too much to key positions. I I'm mean, glad. you look at Evan Ingram, you yeah. know, I mean, tearing us up. That's David Long would – typically be covering that guy you know so, so it's i'm actually glad you brought this up because 
I got this offense, and I know you probably can't see the screen, and that's okay, Rossi. I'll fill you in. But the offense versus defense, this is the latest up-to-date stats I can get you. Total offense, 29th in the league. Total defense, 24th in the league. That doesn't sound like a very good football team, okay? The one element that we pride ourselves in more than anything is running the ball. We'll run it left. We'll run it right. We'll run it right down your throat. We're basically half best in the league. We're 16th best. That stat has taken a drastic toll over the last three weeks. Passing 29th, uh-huh. we've been awful at passing for I don't know how many years. That hasn't changed. Scoring 26th, third down defense or offense 25th. And our red zone was first. Now it's down to sixth. We've had a la- like a hard couple weeks. Um, the offense, I mean – you said you're optimistic or you hope this team can turn it around. When I look at those offensive stats, I know injury is a big uh-huh. part of it, but those offensive stats are going the other way and they're out of control. And I just want to ask you personally, man, why does everyone keep giving Todd Downey a pass? I mean, when he was with the Raiders, their stats got worse. Okay, Carr had his like second worst season of his career, and they were mm-hmm. awful. The fans still hate him. I remember bringing it up the night we hired him, and and people were like, oh, you know, they got all these people that got their own websites and stuff going after me and stuff, and saying, oh, it was the receivers' fault they dropped the ball. What? A, I'm so sick and tired of the excuses. Todd, this is his second season, Michael. Second season with Todd Downey, and we're still mm-hmm. making excuses for the guy. Why is that? Are you talking about the coaching staff or Everybody. the fans? I'm talking Everybody. media that mocks yeah. fans like me and you that say, what, what's going on with Todd Downey? And they, oh, yeah, it's yeah. not Todd Downey's fault. They threw the halfback pass or not the, the, the flea flicker. Oh, that works. That's one play. Mm-hmm. And you notice this, too. Like, there will be a million plays that don't work, but one play works, and that's the play that will run it down your throat. And they'll say, oh, look, Todd Downey was fine here. But it's one play. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand plays. That's one play. It's one percent. It's like, hey, Michael, you know, how many days did you show up to work on time? Oh, you know, I showed up once a month on time. That's not good enough, man. Like, I just don't understand why the local media, you know, Buck Rising gets all fired up about it now. Like, you know, it's a it's a it's a sin to say anything bad about Todd Down. You know, like we're so uneducated when it comes. I mean, I. I, I just, I can't figure it out. And then Vrabel, we know, like, because of the malarkey era, uh, they are just way over-connected to their assistant coaches. And I just, I don't understand why. But why do you think, like, the local media gives him a pass so much? I have no idea, man, because he's absolutely terrible. And what surprised me was, and I, and I don't know if this was just, like, a tweet in the moment, but Austin Stanley made a tweet during the game talking about how he should be fired. And that's the first time like yeah. I've seen a media outlet, like actually lay it on the line and, and say that. And it kind of, I think it was a heat of the moment type of thing for him. But yeah, I mean, Todd Downing's absolutely terrible. He was terrible with the Raiders. I mean, they, they darn near ran him out of town. Um, he's been terrible with us this year last year i mean it's time for him to go you know and it's time for him to go and and people say oh you can't fire him and vrabel said during some radio show that they would not make any uh coaching changes during the season um you know but you the thing is i understand that i get that but at the same time you got tim kelly back there you Mm -hmm. know i mean it's not like you're just going from like todd downing to you know, promoting the offensive line coach or the tight ends coach or the wide receivers coach to be the offensive coordinator. You have a proven offensive coordinator in your building. You know, it's like when they had, it's like Jim Schwartz or whatever, the same on the defense. And he's terrible. He's absolutely terrible. Um, The the play that he called to Henry um, where they shoveled it out, um, it's just, 
yeah, okay. So he calls a good play every now and then. He's an NFL offensive coordinator. He should be able to call a decent play every now and then. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, look at his overall body of work. Look who he's consistently, these personnel that he's, these personnel decisions that he's making in game. Um, it's just unbelievable to me. And um, unfortunately, Upload and, you know, fellow Titans fans, we're stuck with them. And there's yeah. nothing that we could do about it. And we got to hope for the best and hope to God that Derrick Henry can run the ball. I mean, look, before this game, Mark, I thought, okay, here's what we need to do for this game. Get the run game going. Get some confidence back in that offensive line. First quarter, you know, we were we were running the ball all over them. I was like, here we go. Here we go. This is the game we're going to do it. Right? We're going to get, get it back on track, at least in the run game. Maybe not in the passing game, but at least in the run game because that's our identity. You know, get back to our identity, our, our style of play, and the turnovers and the penalties. It was just man, it was just a disaster, you know? And if they want to do anything in the playoffs at all, if they get to the playoffs, that's not a guarantee, No, you know? Um, they are going to have to run the football, point blank, run the football, and Henry, and I, I don't want to get shot by saying this, but Henry needs to stop fumbling. Like, yeah. it's – Three games in a row. Like, come on, dude. Like, what's happened to you? Like, stop fumbling the football. Stop you, giving the ball away. You know why that is? He's pressing. And yeah, he, we all do it. He just hasn't had any daylight. Darren, shout out to Darren. He might be the, he, he you know, like, fan of the year and stuff like that. Um, shout out to Haley, who got, uh, she gave us a, I don't know. She gave us a shout out on social media. So shout out to her. Uh, all she did yeah. for Bryce. Uh, I think she definitely deserved it. So shout out to uh, not only Haley, but Bryce too. I, I saw Bryce actually won more Titans tickets this week, but he, or was it last against the Houston Texans? Fortunately, he won't be able to go though, but that was cool. But I just, I don't know. I mean, Darren, Darren made a great point. And like I said, Darren, ultimate Titans fan. He should be fan of the year. Um, he's he's an amazing guy. Um, and he is team first, but you know what? He understands, and uh, he's not afraid to say some stuff. But at the end of the day, like he's always going to love his team. Um, but, right. but Darren, I, f I know my, my mind went blank because I'm trying to remember what he told me. Um, I can't even remember what we're talking about now. My, my, I was just thinking about how great of a guy Darren is. Uh, but he... Oh, he was. He did ask me about the fifty-three because there are a few spots open who we could bring in. Um, but yeah, that wasn't it. There was something else we were talking about. My bad. I just it's been a long night. Apologize, but yeah. Shout out to Darren. At least I got that out there. We don't need Cody Hollister, and and the Jeff Swain. Did thing. you see Duckies zero and two without Cody Hollister? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that kind of goes back to my other thing. Like, I know Mariota just had a baby, so shout out to him. And um, if assuming that's true, and that's why he took a leave of absence, or no? I don't know. There's all types. I just heard that today. I didn't even know anything about it, but apparently Mariota's MIA. Yeah, yeah but but I saw all these pictures of him and a baby today, and they're like, congratulations yeah. for, you know. But we at the Titans have never won a playoff game with Ryan Tannehill by himself. Have you noticed that? We've not won one playoff game with him by himself. Now, when he has Marcus Mariota by his side, yep, he's won how many playoff games? Two? Is that all that Ryan's won for us is two playoff games? They just were in the same year. Two playoff so, games, yeah. Yeah, because we lost to the Ravens the next year. Championship run. Yep, and then last year we don't even want to mention that, but. Hey, maybe you bring Marcus back. Just put him on the roster, you know, and let uh, Tannehill do his work. But I don't know. Uh, so let's do some closing comments um, going forward. You said you're optimistic. I think that's where we started or we ended. 
Um, mm-hmm. what's gonna what's gonna turn this team around more? Do you have more confidence at the beat up defense at this point, who can't seem to guard anybody? Um, or do you have more faith in the offense, which can't seem to score any points and have been turning the ball over left and right? I, I'm not optimistic. I just I think if there's any chance that a team could do it, a Mike Vrabel led team could possibly do it. I a lot of people have been criticizing Mike Vrabel. Um, look, you know. He, he doesn't have much to work with right now. How much is that on J Rob? I don't know. You know, I mean, of course, the injuries. Um, I think Mike Vrabel's a great coach. I think he's going to be our coach for a long time. And I think he's the type of coach that could eventually get us to where we want to be. Um, now, I mean, do I don't know much about the Ohio State situation. Is he going to entertain that? I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know how much he's into college football. Um, he might possibly entertain that. You know, it just depends. Um, if the front office is in shambles and he's like, man, <laughs> screw this. <laughs> you know, I don't want to work in this environment. Then possibly, you know, we'd run him off or something. But um, I think... We have a nucleus with this team. I just think you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna do anything if you don't get some of these injured players back. Yeah, Danico Autry must have must True. get back. Christian Fulton must have, and Fulton at this point he's just injury prone. I mean he he can't stay on the field that much. The last couple of seasons. You know, that's the issue with him. So we might even have to um we might even have to look for a starting corner in the offseason as well. I mean, because you can't Ugh. rely on Fulton. He's hurt all the time. We and, never work um, cut out for us in this offseason, Rossi. Right. <laughs> really oh are. yeah. But I think if you can get a few key pieces back, Autry, Fulton, and Traylon Burks, if you can get those players back and you can make it to the playoffs, I think if you can pull out two of these last four, which I think you're going to – you might not have to. It depends on how the Jags go and everything, but you might could just win one and make it in. Heck, we might even be in the last game of the season for a play-in game, you know, against the Jags. Who knows? But um, I think if they can get those three players back, Autry, Fulton, and Burks – you got a shot to to improve. Can you turn it around? Can you win a playoff game? I don't know. But you got to get those guys back within the next week or two for for the team to have any chance of saving face and and improving. The question is, can you improve enough over the next four games to be any any bit of a contender at all. I don't know if that's possible. Um, I don't, this Chargers game, I'm really kind of dreading. Um, they're not beating the Chargers. They're because playing they're not well. going to be able Justin to stop Herbert the quarterback. They're just not. No. I mean, Audrey he doesn't play. Simmons is banged yeah. up. I'm not trying to be not optimistic. The only way we're going to beat the Chargers, as you've already mentioned it, it's this guy, 22. 22 is going to have to have like 200 yards and that may not even be enough. I wonder what, have you looked up the chargers at all? And like what they're, I heard that they're, they're not very good in pass protection or they haven't been this year. And I, I didn't know, I haven't really dug into their stats yet. Um, as far as like team stats and things like that, I know they're, um, what they're like six and seven or they're seven and six now. Yeah, because they just um, beat the Dolphins. So I, you know, I I don't know, but look, I mean, the Chargers are are not a perfect team. They're not. I no. mean, they're obviously they're about the same record as us. Um, they have some holes. They're not world beaters. I mean, they are beatable. They're they're banged up too. They do have a lot of yeah. injuries. So I mean, but you're going out to L.A. They're coming off a big win. Um, Justin Herbert's playing in an extremely high level. I just think it's a, it's a tough matchup for us against them. Uh, 
they got who do they got eckler is he still eckler, playing yeah. yeah eckler um yeah i mean they're just let's see rushing yards against their 28th yeah. in the league yeah so i mean that's that's the key that's the key to victory for us um they're last in the league in rushing yards of course they throw the ball a lot so they're fourth in passing yards yep. um points against per game they're letting up 25.1 points so they they're 28th in the league Rossi. we can't score points don't matter who we play they, right and they're 26th in sacks so they're 24th in the league no 26 in the league in sacks with 24. so their defense is not that great i mean they're not they don't have a great defense um not a good run game um so i mean you know we should be able to run the football against them if we ran the football against the jacksonville you know in theory we should be able to run it against them the question is uh, can you hold on to the football and not get costly penalties? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, now we don't really have – this goes back to my other argument. Um, and I guess injuries happen. Hilliard gets, what, injured on a special teams play. But we don't, we don't, we don't have a backup running back anymore. So, like, Haskins, isn't right. he out? I think so. You know, now Hilliard's out. Now we're relying on uh, what's his name, preseason monster. Can't even think yeah. of his name. He made the initial. Uh, oh, the chest is it chest or something or uh, chest uh, chestnut? Julius Chestnut. Chestnut, yeah. And I there's mean, a comment from Posmo, and I saw it. He says you didn't run against Jacksonville, really. I mean, yeah, we had some huge runs. We the first quarter we were killing them in the run game. It's we got so far behind. It was just obsolete at that point. I mean, we couldn't, I feel like if, if we could have utilized the run game more, I mean, Derrick Henry could end up having over 200 yards rushing, but we yeah. were so far behind. We had to try and pass the ball and we're not that team. We are not built to do that. You know? Yeah. Uh, Anvil says, is this the AFC South crappy team support group? We should start one up. Don't tell bring the Jets, what a division. I don't want them to steal our thunder. Um, but yeah, that would be a great moment. I, I don't know. I, and this goes back to my other thing. Like Dante Foreman was such a perfect backup to Henry. You know what I'm saying? And I heard we couldn't pay him $2 million. Mm. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, I know, man. I love you know, Foreman too. But we can go trade a sixth round pick for Daly who can't block anybody. Shout out to Holmes. Holmes is a Bengals fan, but at this but at the end of the day, he's a really good dude. He says the Titans offense is a weakness, and quarterback and OC both need to uh be replaced to put up more points. I don't think Malik Willis, that's the thing, like some of you are kind of split as we're going to wrap this thing up. Some of you are splitting on Malik Willis. We don't know what the new regime is going to think of Malik. And honestly, we don't even know what Vrabel thinks of Malik. So if they give the keys oh, of the castle to Vrabel, again, that was a third round pick. I think they'd be willing to at least have him a part of the Titans as a backup and then go out and try to find out who this missing quarterback is. The problem is we'll be the four seed. Draft pick to get a quarterback, not ideal. Where we'll be in the in the no. in the draft order. So we'll have to ask Brian. Like, is there any hidden gems to to pick up around that area? And what does the cream of the crop of quarterbacks look like? I, I'm just gonna be honest, man. I'm not optimistic. I the last couple weeks have been. I thought Philly was just bad, but last week was even worse because we're making all sorts of non verbal mistakes. The stuff Rabel mm -hmm. prides himself in. Now we're starting to make more and more of those mistakes. Not getting turnovers, turning the ball over, not converting third downs, doing stupid things on defense. And it's just, it's catching up to us. And I get it. Some of you are so optimistic. And shout out to you. Uh, Al says uh, Kevin Hogan's back. So there we go. That's something to look forward to. Um, but man, I just. I just need to see a glimmer of hope. If we go out and beat the Chargers, play pretty well, 
I think that will answer it. And you've mentioned it. I do think a lot of it has to, I'm not going to blame the injuries, but a lot of it has to do with injuries and the distraction of what happened with the GM. So hopefully yeah. we can turn it around, but I just don't know. I know we'll beat the Texans. I know some of you are confused about that. I, we will beat the Texans. The only problem is Rossi Jacksonville plays the Texans. And if that happens and they beat Houston and we beat Houston, doesn't it? Um, if the Jaguars can find another win, no, it would come. Would it come down to that game? We're two up right now, correct? But only really a game and a half. Uh, it would come down to the game if we were both. I think if we both, well, if we both were the same record coming into that game, I think it would come down to that game. Yeah. Um, and another thing too, before we get out of here, it's not like I said. It's not that I'm like, look, I. It's not that I'm optimistic. The I'm optimistic if, you know what I mean? If we can get these players back, you know, if we can, I I just don't think there's a chance if we don't get Fulton healthy, Autry, Burks, there's, there's just no chance. I mean, I I think that those three players are, you're just, David Long being injured is just, was a crucial blow, crucial blow to this team. Um, and God bless Dylan Cole. I mean, he's out there crying after the game and and all that stuff. But um, I think he blamed himself a lot for Ingram. But if you look at and shout out to Titans Torch, he released a breakdown of who gave up yards to Evan Ingram. It was the whole team. I mean, yeah. it was Byard. It was all of them. You know. So um, I, I want to say that I'm optimistic if you know if we can get these injured players back because. I think if you don't, you don't have a shot. You know, I, I just don't see it. And I think Burks is, Burks could be the key. You know, he really could be the key because he's the only guy that scares defenses. He's the only guy that can take the top off. We've seen him play. I think Burks could be amazing in the future. I really do. I mean, I think if he can stay healthy, um, he could be an, an, an awesome wide receiver. You know, no, I, I really believe Burks. that. Yeah, I love but Burks. Just got to stay home. I'm just, right. And I just, I'm just, I don't think we're going to do anything in the playoffs regardless. I mean, I, I think we might win the first game. I think if we can somehow turn it around, say we win three out of the last four and we're going on a high into the playoffs, I think we win the, the most optimistic I am is to win one playoff game. But That's, we're not beating Cincinnati. No, but that even if ever in a perfect world and everything went our way and we get these players back, even at that, I think the most optimistic that I am is we win a playoff game. That's I think it. we I think we could beat Baltimore. Um we match up better against Baltimore. We're just not really good against mobile quarterbacks, but Lamar's been pretty banged up. And we're really good against the run. And that's one thing that the Ravens pride we themselves on. You there. know what I'm saying? But they've already proven they can stop Henry. I know that was a couple of years ago. I just don't, no offense to Holmes, but I just, I don't want to see the Bengals again. It's not that they scare me like Baltimore did back in the day, but we just don't match up well at times. Again. I mean, they just can do some things against us. We can get nine sacks and still lose. Let's just say that. So yeah. when we played them, when we were at the game a couple of weeks ago, you know, it just it just doesn't seem like even if we have a lead, you know they're coming back. And Burrow's such a great – he's putting the ball right on the money at times. I mean, gosh, it just reminds me somewhat of a, like an Andrew Luck type thing with the Titans. I know he's only 3-0 yeah. and against us. But uh, I don't want – I just don't – I don't want to see them. Because they, they do do a pretty good job against Henry. They've done it. Three times, really, I think, in a row now. Mm -hmm. At Cincinnati, really windy. Uh, the playoff game, and then recently. Uh, Titan MVP says, uh, Super Chat, shout out to him real quick. He says, love the show tonight. Stay positive. Upload will be fine. Tighten up. I'll try to be more optimistic, but uh, after the last couple of weeks, it, it really is hard, and we'll see. We'll see against Chargers. All right, we got to run. Thank you to Titan Rossi for being with us. Closing comments, man. Uh, things coming up. And uh, just your overall closing 
arguments. Yeah, I will say this, you know, imagine this Titans fans and in the chat, imagine that, you know, we barely eke into the playoffs. We get the Cincinnati Bengals at home and then we somehow beat them. (laughs) Like what, (laughs) what sweet victory that would be. Like we limp into the playoffs. We're still crap. You know, we barely pull it out. Like it's down to, you know, maybe it goes down to Jacksonville and we, we pull out that game and we we barely make it into the playoffs. Then we come out and just destroy Cincinnati at home. I mean, what what a you know, that would be the most for me, because I literally cannot stand the Bengals. Um, that would be the most sweetest thing that ever happened. Even if we didn't make it another game, didn't make it to the uh, AFC championship or anything, just to beat them one time at home in the playoffs yeah. would just, for me, it would just like make the whole season. Okay. You know? Yeah. That's just a pipe dream. I mean, but it would be anyways, a close game. I just don't have the confidence right. that we would be able to not only come back like last right. year, we had multiple shots late. We just couldn't, we couldn't score. We couldn't get anything going. And then when we did right. we were on two stupid plays on third and one and fourth and one. So this year, right. I mean, I won't. I don't yeah. feel comfortable. We can hang on to a lead, so I don't either. But um, anyways, man, thank you so much for having me on. You guys can follow me on my YouTube Titans Rossi. Of course, you know my channel is a part of the Titan Upload Network as a whole. We appreciate all you guys, all the fans out there. Twitter's been blowing up this season, um, and the channel. This channel's starting to gain some steam ahead. So. Um, you know, I just appreciate from the bottom of my heart, all the support, um, uh, from all you guys out there has, has been really credible, incredible this season. And I've had a lot of fun this season, you know, regardless of what the Titans have done. Um, you guys have made this season a good season for me, you know? Um, so I appreciate that. Hey, we appreciate you, man. And we appreciate you all you've done for the channel. I know I've been kind of MIA lately with everything going on. But like I said, uh, it's going to be nice to get a couple weeks off, not only from work, uh, but also from basketball. Um, Yeah. But hopefully the Titans can uh, somehow find their second win here during the season and and push forward and get a little, like you mentioned, some momentum to finish late. So thanks again, Rossi. We appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, tighten up. So again, that was Titans Rossi. Again, you got to go follow him. Um, you got to go hit that subscribe button. He's actively like, he's probably our most active Twitter. Um, we have so many talented guys. Uh, like Ryan Harris is like our pod podcast guru, uh, if at the jump pass. And then we got, uh, basically power hours. So good with graphic design and, uh, makes his shows almost like, uh, a broadcast sports center thing that you would see you got Brian who breaks down all the latest talent in the draft. And he's not a Titans fan, which is actually better because of the fact he's not biased uh, toward like, we're all biased in our own ways. Cause we love the team so much. He's not flat out tells you, Hey, you need help here. These are the guys that can do it. Can't wait to do all that um, moving forward. But after the season, of course, so I can wait a little bit longer for that. And again, we just, uh, we Titans for life, breaking down uh, with his sources, breaking down information. He's got his own videos going on YouTube, so definitely go check him out. Uh, When he talks, it's real. You know what I mean? When he talks, it's definitely real. And uh, he's also really good with, like, graphic design and stuff like that. So we're so happy to have him a part of this network as well. And then, um, like I said, we are not, he's not in the network, but he's got his own network. He's got his own sports, and TA brings it with watch parties, brings it with his shows, his content, uh, kills it when it comes to YouTube shorts. And um, like I said, again, love all these guys. We love all that they do. Uh, but like I said, TA, it's like, uh, how do we want to describe this with TA? It's like you're you're you know you never know what you're gonna hear there, um, but you're gonna hear real. And, and that's why I love him so much, and that's why I think he does a really great job at what he's doing over there. And, again, we all uh, 
love the Titans, except for Brian. But we all feel like this is a uh, – we love you guys. You guys have made this. You've always made this. You've always been a part of this. Uh, back when we had five subscribers to where we are now, um, you know, I owe you guys everything. You guys have been awesome. So thanks so much. Uh, I'll take a few closing comments, and then we'll have to move on. And thanks again to – titans rossi so shout out to him uh there was a couple questions i did want to get to and i did see them uh this was one by elite so what's going on with byard and hooker this year you know i i don't necessarily think it's um you know nothing i mean for hooker it's it's staying healthy you know he's been out a couple times even was out this past game and he came back it's just staying on the field he definitely gives us another dynamic of the defense of what we can and cannot do. And um, I believe he's already been extended, so he'll be back. Bayard, I just think that they have him, they just have him doing, like, so many different things. And I think defense or offenses do give him the credit he deserves and don't necessarily always try to challenge him or challenge his side. So the Titans got to be very creative in how they use him. That's why you saw him, like, come uh, underneath you know, trying to take away a tight end last week. Uh, you might see him, you know, trying to up stop in the run. Uh, you might see him really, really far deep. I think they try to mix Byard up the best they can, but I think a lot of us, and we're, I'm guilty of this too, like we judge people on just production on specific stats. Like for basketball, like the players that come off the court for me, I think may have played a really good game, but they only care about points. And it's like, oh, I only had two points. Well, you still had like six steals and you had eight rebounds. And, you know, you were just, so, you know, we were plus 15 with you on the floor. And it's like, yeah, but I only had two points. So I think we get like that as fans sometimes, especially with fantasy football being so like, you know, crazy. But I, but I do think we get like a little bit into that. You know, Derrick Henry, we judge him. This was a prime example last week. Oh, Derrick Henry had over 100 yards. You know, Derrick Henry did this and he did that. And then someone will say, well, yeah, but Derrick Henry fumbled the ball twice. If you ask Derrick if he had a good game, he says his game was her terrible. He had a touchdown, but he fumbled twice. Interceptions kind of worked the same way. You know, we, you know, Ryan Tannehill, three interceptions against Bengals. That's a bad performance. You don't know what he's what saying. That's a great performance by Tannehill. But Tannehill's also showed you, like, he can play a very effective game, throw it 70 yards, and maybe one or no touchdowns, and we still win playoff game. And we're like, wow, Ryan made some bitty you know, some big crucial throws during that game, but he's still only at 74 yards. So I do think with Bayard not having any interceptions, I don't think it's necessarily concerned, but I'm telling you what, if anything ever happened to Bayard, I think we'd probably know how valuable he is. Al says playoffs. Don't talk about playoffs. <sighs> I think we're going to go to the playoffs. I've already told you we are going to be the four seed. The question is, I just don't know who we're going to play. And ultimately, I wouldn't want to play Cincinnati, but I think it's going to come down between. It's going to be the best playoff team other than a division winner. So if you look in the other end, Tampa Bay is probably going to be that, and they'll probably lose in record. But they'll play the best NFC team that's not a division winner. It's going to be Dallas, and Dallas right now is only three losses. It could be Cincinnati. It could be Baltimore. And honestly, it could be Miami. But those are the three teams you're looking at. So you might want to start thinking and taking notes and watching these guys play weekly and see, like, hey, what could the Titans do to be most effective? They're not very good against mobile quarterbacks. We've seen them be shredded at times. Mahomes shredded us, and he's not even really a mobile quarterback. We've seen um, uh, what, Josh Allen, you know, do some things against us. And last week, Lawrence extended plays with his legs, okay? And he made those things happen. You know, Lamar, I mean, I, we've already seen him run all over us in the one playoff game. Uh, they, The middle linebackers are an issue right now. So until those guys get healthy, until we start bringing back some of these guys that Rossi mentioned on the defensive front, I think it's going to be long and hard before we can really start to just think about how great this team's going to do in the playoffs. If you get to the playoffs, though, anything can happen. So, I mean, that's the truth behind it. Uh, you would want to play Miami at home if the weather's bad because two is just not good in bad weather. We saw that happen last year. They came in with like a seven-game win streak, and 
It was 31 to three. We beat them. Um, they were never even in that game. Tua just made a lot of mistakes. I know they got Tyreek now and all that stuff, but I think at the end of the day with uh, with Miami, if it's a nice day, then yeah, you probably got to worry about their offense. If it's a gloomy day and there's some things going on, then I think we'll have a pretty decent chance. But again, Miami's given us fits over the years too, other than the, the one year uh, last year. All right, one more comment going back through here. I just want to shout out Ryan Harris one more time. Ryan is... Like I said, he's going to be more positive for the network, but he's not just being positive. Like he's got a lot of research behind what he's telling you. Um, I'm not sure we're going to do um, a watch party this week uh, for the Titans Chargers game. It's a late game, so it's going to be later in the afternoon. Probably try to do a pregame, but a Thinking about restarting the pre um, the pre recorded videos, you know, I used to do that a lot. Um, you know, I would set up the different types of cameras, and you know, try to add the more graphic and then just try to make them fun too, but also have them research based. I think I'm going to start that that back up again. It's just time's been the issue, but I'm going to be getting enough, uh, you know, like I said, a couple weeks off here, so I, I got some things. We're meeting as a network as well to try to figure out something to kind of make us even more connected than just saying, hey, we're a part of the network and showing a logo. So we are kind of doing that behind the scenes. If you guys got any suggestions, send them my way for sure. All right. I think that's it. You guys were awesome. Appreciate it. Definitely tighten up that like button on your way out. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, we appreciate it. Just say we will be doing a show. I don't want to give away anything, but I'll say we'll be doing something in the future um further taking this episode but for right now we still have four games left and we have a playoff game fingers crossed but playoff game too so five at least um this team could catch fire this team could change it uh, i think injuries are a big concern when those guys come back um this thing can turn around but right now my gut feeling i don't know how we're gonna beat the charge okay that's my primary focus next week Game against the Chargers. This week against the Chargers. Don't care about anything else uh, down the line. Chargers this week. That should be our focus. So come back at some point uh, and do something uh, getting ready for this game. And then we'll be doing a watch party on Sunday. So take care. You guys are amazing. Tighten up.